Imagine I gave you a bag of 8,000 of your favorite green candies. You set it down. Ten minutes later, you look and find that 4,000 of those candies have turned red. After another 10 minutes, you look again and find that half of the remaining 4,000 green candies have turned red. After another 10 minutes, again, half the green candies have turned red. In fact, every 10 minutes, half the remaining candies turn red. You know what this is called? This is a half-life, and this is how radiometric decay works. Every type of an element's decay is characterized by a half-life. Scientists have discovered a lot of the elements that make up Earth's chemistry. Eventually, scientists arrange these elements into a table called the periodic table based on the properties of the elements. One of the primary features of an atom that determines where it's located on the periodic table is the number of protons it has. In their studies, scientists learned that some elements will change from one element to another, causing the number of protons and or neutrons to change. We call this radioactive decay. This process is all about atoms transforming into new atoms that are more stable. Elements that are less stable will decay into elements that are more stable. Let's start by talking about some basics about how radioactive decay works. There are different types of radioactive decay, but the one thing that all forms of radioactive decay have in common is the way they go about decaying. Just like our example with the candies, as an element decays into something else, the ratio of elements that are present changes over time. Radiometric dating is all about calculating an age based off this ratio. For example, when uranium-238 decays, it changes into a more stable element. In the process, 32 protons and neutrons change into helium and evaporate, which leaves 206 remaining. The element with 206 protons and neutrons is lead. So the amount of lead atoms increases as the amount of uranium decreases. Measuring this ratio is a key to measuring the object's age. In order to figure out how long an element's half-life is, scientists had to record how fast elements decay. And these results have become available for other scientists to use. Here are a few examples. The half-life of carbon-10 is about 19 seconds. The half-life of sulfur-35 is about 88 days. Titanium-44 decays with a half-life of 60 years. The half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. Uranium-238's half-life is 4.5 billion years. Scientists measure different elements different ways because some are solids, some are liquids, and some are gases. But what we all need to know is that all radiometric dating techniques rely on predictable decay rates. Now, you might wonder, how can we measure something that has a half-life of 4.5 billion years? To explain this, let's use a simple analogy. Say you live in California and you're taking a trip to Florida. Now let's assume your traveling speed is constant. Because we know the distance between California and Florida, we would only have to watch you travel for a few minutes to be able to use that speed to calculate how long your trip to Florida would take. So to measure the half-life of uranium, scientists don't need to wait around 4.5 billion years to watch half the uranium decay into lead. All they need to do is get a large enough sample of uranium, observe the number of decays of uranium into lead over a few years. From this measurement, they can calculate how long it would take for half the uranium to be gone. These half-lives have been verified and are shared by the scientific community all over the world. They are now used as a type of ruler to measure age, in much the same way that elements have been organized by their proton count on the periodic table. It is a commonly understood and validated organization of measurements. The periodic table of elements and this table of half-lives work together and are both well-validated systems of measurement. Some Christians may think of decay as a bad thing or as a result of the fall of Adam into sin. But when we look at it more closely, we can see that radiometric decay is a natural part of God's original design for His good creation. It provides us with a powerful tool to study the amazing record of God's involvement in creation, a record that demonstrates careful planning and spectacular fine-tuning so that humans could exist at just the right time.